Hello everyone, this is Jotto and welcome to Versus Series, where a member of my team, Ace Breakers, faces off against a well-known up-and-coming pro player. For this week, we have James Hugs from Ace Breakers playing against Exploding Cow. That has to be the single best name I've ever had on this show, and he is from Team Infused. So, uh, yeah, Exploding Cow. I'm not sure I'm going to say that name for the rest of the series, but anyway. So before we get started, a couple of changes to Versus series. We're trying out Conquest uh, this time. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what Conquest is, it's basically you both bring three decks. So yeah, it's best of five. So you both bring three decks, and the aim is to win once with each deck. So when you win, you switch, but your opponent can also switch. It's a weird dynamic, and... I'm not sure how it is in terms of competitive format, but I think it's definitely more fun to watch. So we're going to be doing Best of Five Conquest. So before we start, the classes for both sides of things are Rogue, Hunter, and Mage from uh, Mr. James Hugs, and Mage, Paladin, and Hunter from The Cow. Starting classes are a bit hard to predict because it's, it's pretty random, quite frankly, and there isn't a first game advantage. So, without further ado, let's just get into the game. So, it looks like we're going to have Rogue versus Hunter as the opening here. Uh, Mulligans-wise, I think you send back Lotha, Vile Teacher. I think you just send back everything, and then as far as Hunter's concerned, you can send back probably the un actually everything apart from... No, I think you send back everything on both sides, actually. Keeping the abusive is okay. Um, I can see why you keep the abusive. The problem with keeping the abusive is that it dies to the hero power. However, it does let you get effectively two extra damage in for free. So, yeah, we see almost full mulligans from both sides. I would say the knife juggler is a good opener. However, there is a backstab. So that does neuter that opening quite significantly. Now, given the hand, I would not coin this knife juggler because if you do, you have nothing to do next turn. So I would actually just pass, and then uh, Knife Juggler next turn into 4-drop. Antique Heal Bot, that's going to be handy. Notice that he chose to not attack there. That's primarily because of Deadly Poison being in the deck. So it's debatable whether or not you want to attack. I would say you probably do want to attack the previous turn because you'd have the extra mana this turn to uh, use your hero power anyway. So slight miss of damage there. However, the backstab does come in and takes out that knife juggler. As we see, another knife juggler. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is animal companion into sludge belcher and then you can uh, curve out almost. Huffer is a good pickup. It is just going to die though. The question is how do you kill it? I think you shiv and then... Uh, Ugh, you don't want a blade flurry. So yeah, you just use your face. That's miserable. Taking 8 damage from an animal companion is not optimal. Alright, this looks to be a coin into Sludge Belcher. Then if it gets sapped, you just Belcher again. So I think this is a Belcher. Going for the Shredder. Interesting. I think Shredder is not quite as powerful there, but uh, you do save onto the coin, so that's that could be relevant. Let's see what this pile to Shredder gets after the uh, the deadly poison comes down and kills it. Doomsayer. Nope. The ship's cannon. Okay, it turns out not playing that uh, not playing that coin. Super good, but this high main is never going to stay on the board because there are two saps. So the high main won't stick around. In fact, you could, in theory, go knife juggler, a haunted creeper, abusive. Hope for a trigger onto that uh, violet teacher, that is. The other options here are coin high main and sludge belcher. One thing you've got to keep in mind is that you are actually getting pretty close to killing him. However, there is an anti-heal bot, so that neuters that game plan just a slight bit. Let me just close this window. Something I forget to do a lot. 
All right, so yeah, this looks like a sap, and I would actually just play Earthen Ring Farseer here. Heal yourself up a bit, take out the ship's cannon. Earthen Ring Farseer is a very, very good pickup. Means that the total amount of healing is up to 11. Kill Command. At this point, I would actually say that the Hunter is in a very, very bad position. Exploding Cow is going to have to figure out some way out of this, and I don't know if there is one. You could go Knife Juggler, Haunted Creeper, Coin Unleash this turn, or Knife Juggler, Unleash, Abusive Sergeant. That seems good. That's six mana. Yeah, you can, you can pull that off. I mean, there is still the coin for that seventh mana for the other play. Going for Broke, if he's going for the high main, this is basically saying it's probably probably doesn't have the other sap if he just used it. But James actually does have the second sap. Alright, so using the coin here with the Haunted Creeper is is better actually. That's much better. It sets up Knife Juggler next turn. That's that was a good play. Now this looks like either a sprint turn or a sap. Yeah, going for the sprint. Now, the reason for this is because you can get away with it. There's also a bunch of free spells in the deck and two preparations. And one of them is a free-ish spell. Uh, free spell in terms of mana, not in terms of cards. Question is, how do you distribute this damage? Alright, he's going for maximum survival as far as... Uh, Minions goes, it's a bit risky simply because of the way Unleash the Hounds operates. However, he's pretty, feeling pretty safe. I would not be feeling pretty safe because this is a lot of dogs. Five Knife Juggler triggers. And there's more because Haunted Creeper can generate another two. Pretty much perfect Knife Juggler trigger so far. Are any going to go to the face? Wow. Alright, so you actually kill one, and then you want to keep your Haunted Creeper alive here. But, wow, that was a very, very good Unleash the Hounds there. I think uh, Exploding Cow has turned this game around. I don't know if he can win from here, but it's definitely back in a possibility of him winning. So the question is, how do you play this turn? You found a nice first, see what you get. That, that bit is the obvious bit. The question is, where do you go from there? Alright, SS7 and then Hero Power. Hero Power and then just hit the face, I guess. Or you could not hit the face. I think hitting the face is fine. Maybe actually hitting the Hunter Creeper. You take three that way instead of one. Yeah, that's not worth it. As we see the Sludge Belcher come down again. <laughs> third time he's played this. I mean, not third. He didn't play it second time. Second sap was not used. So, I would say Exploding Cow is looking like he's favored to win this. There is an anti kill bot, however. So, is there a way of clearing this board? That is the real question. You can sap the 3-5 uh, and then clear it with a fan of... Uh, not a fan of... It's a blade flurry. And that maybe is enough to just stabilize this and put it back in James's favor. This is a really dynamic game so far. Yeah, making sure he doesn't flurry before. This has been a really, really dynamic game, and I would actually say it's back in James's favor. It's gone tipsy-turvy for the past couple of uh, turns. Now, given that draw, I would say you go high main and then web spinner hero power. You're going to need these kill commands for the face. You know that he's out of saps, so you have to stick a high main. I don't know about the skill command. The problem with the skill command is if he has sharp sword oil, you're probably dead anyway in some sort of weird ass combo. Oh, that's a poison. Going for the lower third, which means he's going to try and win the game next turn, which I actually think is doable. It is very doable. However, there is a sludge belcher. So I think this turn you actually pass on the face damage and just go sludge belcher. 
Iron Beak Owl silence the 4-4 uh, four four and then take out the Lothab. That would leave you with two two twos, a two one, a big taunt, and pretty much nothing in hand. But I think you have to go for it anyway. Very interesting game. This is a very difficult turn. Uh, for all those people who say that Hunter is easy to play, not always the case. <laughs> Not always the case. There are some very, very difficult turns sometimes, usually related to do with how you distribute your damage. And this is one of those difficult turns. It's basically how you trade this high main. That's, uh, that's the, the big point of decision making, is how you trade this. Do you kill the 4-4 or the 5-5 and silence the 4-4? Alright, so he's going for the play I suggested. I think there's, there's an argument to be made about the other ones because the rogue hero power makes up to 5 damage anyway. I think that might be game. Hero power, uh, deadly poison, attack the sludge belcher, flurry, eviscerate. Is that is that enough? That might be enough. You attack there, you flurry. That deals three, and then uh, you can use the South Sea deckhand to get past the taunt and eviscerate the face. Is that enough? I don't think it is. Nope, not quite enough. However, this does put Cow in a pretty much impossible situation. High main Houndmaster, go, go, go. I don't think that's enough. This may be the end of the game. Yep, there's the Sharp Sword Oil. That is, in fact, the end of it. That should be lethal in some way or another. Prep into Oil. That's oiling beforehand actually makes no difference. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. But yeah, there's there's the lethal straight up. Sharp sword oil being very very good. That's why it's called oil rogue. It's in the name. As uh, James Huggs takes game number one. Now let's see what exploding cow decides to bring in. He does have paladin and mage. Goes for the paladin. Now, keeping in mind that he knows his opponent's classes, but he knows his opponent has to switch. So it's either going to be Hunter or Mage uh, on James Hugg's side. Now, we have seen uh, James Hugg's play on Versus Series before. He's very fond of his Freeze Mage. Uh, that's just the thing. He's very fond of his Freeze Mage. And this looks like a mid rangey Hunter list based on the fact that there is a Savannah High Main in the hand. And that is a Echoing Ooze and a Captain Greenskin. What is this deck? <laughs> what is this deck? I am curious as to see if this is one of Exploding Cow's brews. Uh, he's practically known for his brews, at least within the Infused team. He's uh, run some pretty insane builds in the past, and this might be one of them. Now, this opening hand from James is pretty ridiculous. Mad Scientist into Mad Scientist into double Eagle Horn Bows. If he has two traps in his deck, that's just insane. And by contrast, there is Echoing Ooze, but the Echoing Ooze is just going to trade with the Mad Scientist here, so not fantastic. Now, Echoing Ooze being in the deck lends itself to having Sword of Justice in the deck because that is a ridiculous combo. Going for the trades instead of going for the face. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, there is enough three drops. There's basically three drops for days in this hand. But basically what he's thinking is, all right, this looks like an Avenge deck. This looks like a deck playing Sword of Justice. So for anyone who doesn't know, the Sword of Justice interaction with Equine Goose makes a 2-3 and a 3-4, which is just ridiculous. Because the 2-3, it gets buffed to a 2-3. Then it copies itself at the end of the turn, and the new copy of the 2-3 gets buffed again. So you get a Dark Cultist and a 2-3 for, uh, for two mana after your sword, which is pretty ridiculous on turn 4. Or turn 3 if you coin out the sword. Now, I'm guessing by the fact that uh, said that didn't quite hit the mark, that is probably a freezing, <laughs> and he should have traded. I'm guessing that's uh, that's what that means. Yep, that looks like a freezing. If there's only one trap in the deck, it is in fact a freezing. 
Now that consecration did take the whole turn, but there is a Sludge Belcher coming up next turn. Knife Juggler, very good top deck there, goes to the Knife Juggler into the Hero Power. And there is an Unleash the Hounds to respond to any muster, muster shenanigans or anything in, in that particular realm of possibility. I think I like uh, Haunted Creeper here, see where the trigger goes, and then uh, Eagle Horn. Okay, that was a good trigger. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want to trade off your Knife Juggler here, that is worth it, and then just go for the Eagle Horn Bow and take out the 1-2 with the, the Leoc. Actually, do you take it out with the Leoc? I think you take it out with the Bow. Missing 1 damage is okay if your opponent has Muster for Battle in his deck. Uh, because it means that he can take out your Leoc with just the muster, which is not a good trade for you. Not to mention, keeping the Leoc alive is very important because there is an Unleash the Hounds in hand, as uh, James does in fact go along that line of play. Missing one damage is okay here. Elder Peacekeeper, a good pickup for the high main, but not quite relevant this turn. Now in the hand there is a equality, there's an echoing ooze you can play, silver hand recruit, which is a bit awkward. Captain Greenskin not doing an awful lot. Dr. Boom is just too slow. This is a weird hand to uh to deal with on the on the side of Exploding Cow. You got six mana, so you could go for some sort of echoing ooze play. Or just slam the greenskin and hope for the best. It's difficult to figure out exactly what the correct play here is. We'll have to see the line of play he wants to go with. One thing I will say though, because of the sheer lack of taunts, I would put this in the favor of James Hugs, even though his high main is going to get outlawed, which is not fantastic. So yeah, going for that Echoing Ooze hero power turn, that is miserably bad for the Paladin in this situation. So the question is, how is he going to play this? I think this is a very good Unleash the Hounds. He may just go for it. Yeah, it goes to the Unleash. Going to take out both of the Oozes with the Unleash and then probably the 1-1 one -one with the Haunted Creeper. And honestly, just Hero Power. Just Hero Power. And hit the face with the bow. There's a second bow in hand. I think you Hero Power here. Um, I don't see the point in the Freezing. Freezing doesn't do anything. I honestly don't, I don't think that was good. Freezing doesn't do anything here. There's no charge minions in the Paladin deck. As we see, Dr. Boom come down. Now, the real question is, how do you play this? I think attacking with uh, everything to the face is fine. I will say that if he uh, attacked the face with the bow and the hero power last turn... Alright, so he's, he's going for trading because he didn't go for damage last time. Trying to get this freezing on this boom. I would like to point out that if he had gone for the face there, he would have done 6, bringing him down to 11. And he would have been down to 6 if he had gone for the previous turn and he could have played bow there. Bow hero power. He would have been down to 1 health. 1 if he had gone for the, uh, the hero power attack the face with the bow play last turn. I'm pretty sure it's one, because he would have done four plus. He would have done nine extra damage plus uh, another five. Yeah, he would have done fourteen extra damage, which would have been almost game ending no matter what. I mean, there was a top deck lay on hands, which meant that this uh, did go pretty well in in terms of uh, exploding cows' favor there in terms of the top decks. However, the question is, how does this trading work? So yeah, he's going to try and kill off as much as possible here, since the high main did get Aldor. Try and keep this boom on its heels. So he's going to want to play this bow out. Uh, actually, no, you just play the Shredder and the Hero Power. Try and incentivize your opponent into bringing this trap, which he really doesn't want to do. Nine mana, Dr. Boom is not fantastic. As this is a lot of damage. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That is lethal if nothing's removed here. 
That is definitely lethal if nothing's removed. However, there could be an Elder Peacekeeper, there could be a Lay on Hands, there's a multitude of different things that could happen here. So we'll have to see the, the line of play that ends up coming through on the side of Exploding Cow. I think the Lay on Hands is the safest play. Question is, does he go for that? I mean, he's playing a bit of an unorthodox paladin list here, so he may be playing some weird, wonderful stuff in it, so he knows the deck better than I do. But uh, I am curious to see where this, where this turn is going to end up going. Going for the Owldor, by the looks of it, and the Dark Iron Dwarf. Alright, that's what that was. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out what that card was for a while. So it's a Dark Iron Dwarf, and not just playing it out as a 4-4. What do you do here? That is a good question. I guess you can go mass knife juggler triggers. That's one way of doing it. I mean, you can do 12 damage if you're incredibly lucky with knife juggler. I think what you do here is you hit the Dark Iron Dwarf with the High Main. No, no, you hit the 3 3 with the bow first. Then you hit the Dark Iron Dwarf with the High Main. See what happens. The reason for it is because it means you can trade your Knife Juggler into it. Oh. Not the best triggers right there. This is getting a little bit on the frisky side of things as it ends up working out. Alright, that uh, trigger did actually just save him the single, singular damage, because he could just attack there. And now we're back to where we were last turn. Now I think this turn he has to lay on hands. If he doesn't lay on hands here, he's dead. So, because there is there's 7, 8, 9 damage on board, plus hero power 11, so he has to lay on hands, no choice. If there's a top deck kill command, that does not kill him. I mean, trading the web spinner in and then getting King Crush would be lethal right now, but let's be honest, that's probably not going to happen. I was about to say me and my big mouth, but uh, nope, did not happen. Very well played holding on to this bear, by the way. Holding on to that bear was very, very good, and the reason for it was because of Kill Command. Playing out the Haunted Creeper to play around AoE. So, good selection of that particular turn. Now, there was a Consecration pickup. The problem with Consecration is it only reduces the damage by... 3? Yeah, it only reduces the damage by 3. Instead of 5, there will be uh, 2 on that side of the board. I mean, from the hyenas onwards. So there's uh, six on the six damage on the board directly, plus the three from the weapon, two from the hero power. That leaves him at eleven damage. He can reduce that down to eight. The problem is that this game is getting to a point where it's just like, can the exploding cow survive? <laughs> That's really where this game has gone, and it's not a fantastic place to be. Let's see if there's lethal. Is there lethal? Abusive. Is that lethal? Three, six. Yep, that is exact. That is ten exactly. And that is going to take the game, putting James Hugs 2-0 up. So, even though it's best of five, we are going to be moving into the third game, provided he doesn't miss lethal here. Uh, we're going to be moving into the third game, where Exploding Cow will be trying to fight to stay in the series. So, he is forced to bring in Mage, in fact, on uh, James Huggs' side, I mean. And Exploding Cow has brought in Mage, knowing that there's going to be a Mage Mirror Match. Yep, we're in for a long one, folks. This is a freeze mage. 
Now, some of you may know my opinions on Freeze Mage, but I'll keep them down to a, a mellow. Basically, last time we got ver uh, last time we had Freeze Mage on Versus series, it was against Control Warrior, and it was excessively boring. But at least it's not a mirror on the other side of things. This looks to be a duplicate, probably maybe Echo of Medivh deck. Uh, duplicate is one of my favorite secrets, uh, partly because when Nax Ramus came out, it was the card I tinkered around with the most, along with Mad Scientist. So, really, really like Duplicate. Love the uh, the neat little tricks you can come up with, like Sludge Belcher with Duplicate. There is also Zombie Chow, which is just going to get pinged off here. I mean, you play the Arc Intellect, and then next turn you ping off with Mad Scientist. Health totals are not going to matter fantastically in terms of... Uh, in this game, simply because when one of them dies, it's going to be very, very quickly, usually to Alex Straza in the case of Exploding Cow dying. And on the other side of things, probably get valued to death. I would put this in James's favor heavily. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not an expert on uh, Duplicate versus Freeze Mage, but just based on the way Freeze Mage works, I would assume that it does better against a board, uh, against a board control deck that relies on minions. That is an explosive sheep. The sheep has been sighted. Do you blow up the explosive sheep? No. Explosive sheep is going to do practically nothing uh, this game. That's just a thing. It will not do anything. This is Acolyte paying, paying your own Acolyte, which is one of those insanely good combinations that uh, Mage has access to, usually in Arena, but Freeze Mage also uses it. As we do see the Alex Straza come up there, there's also Fireball, Frostball, and Frost Lance. Now, the amount of burst in hand is actually, what, 6, 10, 13? So, alright, that's all the cards he needs to win. So, we've got to that stage of the game. There was actually an explosive sheep detonation there. But we got to the stage in the game where James Hugs is, is basically at a point where he has everything he needs in his hand. This is a waiting game. Uh, this is a waiting game from here, where you Alex Raza turn 9, and then Pyroblast turn 10, and then uh, Fireball, Frostball, Ice Lance to turn after, and it's just impossible to uh, come back from that. Sludge Belcher, not going to do a lot here. The problem is, on uh, James' side, is that he has way too many cards in hand. You could go Frost Nova here, just blow it immediately, since there is a Flame Strike. You could go double Doomsayer, because they're not exactly being useful. Or just Doomsayer, draw, see what you get. And this looks like a secondary Doomsayer. <laughs> yep, nothing else to play in hand, because he would have been at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards, I think. If he played Loot Hoarder, he would have milled the card. And quite frankly, I think he does have all the cards he needs in his hand. However, it can't be too safe. Not to mention, with the Flame Strike, Blizzard, and Frost Nova, these Doomsayers are not going to be too handy since basically Exploding Cow's uh, deck with Exploding Sheep. I missed that one. But anyway, Exploding Cow's deck is entirely board control focused and is not really putting on charge pressure. The question is, what do you do here? I think you actually just attack and then play duplicate. Pass. Actually, do you even play duplicate here? Does that work? I think it does. If you play duplicate, you get two. Uh, do you get two belchers? It says start of turn on Doomsayer, so I'm guessing that works. Hand size is a bit of an issue here, where you've got nine cards in hand, so if he duplicates the sludge belcher, he's actually. I guess he's going down to 8 and then plus to 10, so yeah, he's going to mill himself, so he needs to play another card. Coin, just to play it, maybe. That looks to be where this is going. Yeah, just going to play it. As we see, I'm guessing this is a duplicate. Yeah, alright, so my mechanics have not failed me. Duplicating that Sludge Belcher, that's a ridiculous amount of value we got off of those Double Doomsayers, which is kind of hilarious. What do you do at this point? I think you just go Explosive Sheep Loot Hoarder. Yeah, you ping your own one. Force your opponent to invest more than uh, two mana to wipe your board. 
I mean, not more than two mana. Basically, actually, does that do anything? <laughs> I don't think that did anything. I mean, he wasn't going to do anything else with the mana anyway, so it's regardless. But, uh, playing the explosive sheep, he pings the explosive. I get, yeah, it does actually. He doesn't take one damage. That's the benefit. Now, that appears to be 15 damage in hand. Uh, that, that does look to be 15 damage in hand. However, there is an antique heal bolt. And he's going to get pyroblasted. I am going to hope that the pyroblast is the last spell that comes across. Because watching someone die to pyroblast is one of the single most satisfying things in the entire game. But instead, going for a bit of burst now, and then uh, board wipe. I think he could have won in two turns, personally. However, if there was another antique heal bot, then that would have messed him up significantly. So at this point, you just double fireball. Uh, just don't let your opponent get the mad scientists. <laughs> Got some serious board coming out here. I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, he needs Alex Straza, basically. Alright, so yeah, this is... I'm really hoping this is not a Pyroblast. Come on, be the cool guy. Don't... No. Why don't you kill him with Pyroblast? It's like the best animation Mage has. <laughs> so we're going to see some, some standard kill with Fireballs, which is, which is always boring. If there's Pyroblast in the deck, you better kill with it. That's, that's my motto with Pyroblast whenever I get it in Arena. And I guess it was back when uh, Pyroblast was actually good. Uh, when it was 8 mana, and you just see these people dying to Pyroblast. It got very, very annoying, if you were playing against it. Always been one of the more fun uh, things to actually play with. Now, that is an ice barrier, not an ice block, so that fireball is going to just go straight through and kill him. Meaning, James Hugs takes the series 3-2-0, which makes the best of five a bit redundant for a first try. But anyway, so... Three games happened there. We got Rogue versus Hunter, which was a very dynamic game with no one really in the lead for more than one or two turns at a time, which is crazy. Normally, games get very, very snowbally, but that was a very back and forth game. Always the more fun ones to watch. Then we had Hunter versus Paladin, which was basically, it might as well have been tower defense on the Paladin side of things, just last as long as you can. And he couldn't last long enough, so he ended up dying at the end there. Ran out of heals, ran out of taunts. Ended up just dying to the Hunter Rush. Although that Dr. Boom uh, mini game there with Freezing Trap was kind of amusing. Now the last game, Freeze Mage versus Duplicate Mage, it's pretty much a done deal. I mean, at that point, I don't think it's... One of the difficulties with Conquest is that if your lineup is weak... Not if your lineup, if one deck has a almost unwinnable matchup then you can't come back. Yeah, this is a problem with uh, this particular archetype where you can leave the deck that is strongest against one of his decks to last, and then no matter what, you can't really lose. It is an issue with the format, but it does, however, allow for a lot more interesting and diverse series. So anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback on the Conquest versus Deck Elimination thing, put it in the comment section. The decks will be in the description and also on the tabs if you're on uh, Hearthbone. But anyway, as for now, this has been Jodo, signing off.